have another question here from Mike. Um, the, the questions are coming thick and fast now, Mr. Krames. Um, Mike says, hi there. That's enthusiastic. Hi there, Mike. Uh, I would like to know what mixing techniques remain for you from the late 50s and early 60s that you would never abandon? Um, well, the 50s, I was not actually recording yet. <laughs> but you That's were learning. I was trying to learn. No, I started in 62. But yes, the... Oof, that's a good question. What's left? <laughs> I'm not sure how to answer that question. Um, all I can say is that when you learn how to record mono in the early 60s, all the way through 66, just before I went to Olympic, which was four track, you know, we were recording mono and two track, three track at the very most. So you had to get the sounds were done in mono. Get a drum sound, put it on one track, bang. You your balance had to be good. So that when it carried through on a two track, three track, four track, whatever, it would still sound good in the final analysis. So it was that initial balance making it sound great in mono first is the first lesson of the day. Uh, I think that's one of the things I love about this specific session as well. It's like when you first start listening to it, it sounds very mono, but then the vocals just woof, spread it out. It's very, very yeah. so. So moving on, the next question uh, is actually from a relative of yours in London. Uh, are you ready? Yep. Hi, Eddie. This is your cousin Paul Stone in London. I hope you are keeping well. You and I have often talked about the warmth that we perceive comes from the old days of analog recording techniques and equipment as distinct from the digital environment that we have today. My question is, do you think that the advances in digital technology have enabled you to recreate some of the older vintage type soundscapes that you were creating in the old days of your time at Atlantic and Headley Grange here in the UK and other studios such as the Record Plant, Electric Ladyland in New York? That's a good question. Hello, Cosm Paul. Thanks a lot for the question. I hope you will say hi to the family. Fantastic. Okay, yes, the answer is absolutely. And the reason why I say that is because with um, the advancement of technology, we've been able to convert the analog sound that's coming out of the studio from the mics into the mic pre's into console or whatever you're using. If you're even going straight into Pro Tools, you can then use something like a Burl mothership, which converts the analog signal into digital. And it is the closest thing I've ever found to the original tape. And all the Hendrix tapes that we play from when we're mixing, we transfer from tape through the burl back into Pro Tools and keep working. And so, uh, always get interrupted by these bloody phones. I didn't kill that one. I tell so you. That, that's the deal. <laughs> but the thing is, it, it's, it's very possible today when you look at all the plugins that you can get that give you warmth. Uh, it's amazing, and you can get that analog sound, yes. Um, we uh, got them thick and thin here. So there was a guy who asked a few minutes ago, do you suggest that people f uh, uh, master just a few plugins when using plugins or you know, uh, stash up a huge pile of them and try and use as many as possible? Oof, uh, yeah, well... You know, we have too many bloody choices, don't we, today? It's just like, it's there's a plethora of plugins from every manufacturer uh, under the sun. Um, I sometimes think there are too many. Um, do you, ma I mean, if you master one set of uh, plugins from one manufacturer and you try the other manufacturer and then you try the other man, and there's, there's 20 of them and they all have their various sound qualities, I think you go for what is it that you like to record? Is it pop music? Is it R&B? Is it blues? Is it, what, what is it? Je whatever you're into, find the plugins that work for you, that sonically give you the result that you feel is translating the music that's been played in the room. That's how I would go. Um, 
otherwise you, you you know sometimes you just go oh there's so many plugins i mean then you end up putting too many damn plugins and one's canceling out the other and you've destroyed what could have been a really cool sound initially yeah you kind of dig yourself into a hole unless you're really careful don't you so and then you have to pull mm -hmm. everything off and start again